Alrighty. It's Wednesday, March 7th. And it's just about 12.30. And it's time for Comments X. Yay! Well, uh, we've been moving up in the, uh, in the uh, view ranking and moving up in the sub ranking. Uh, we're now at 15. So I'm happy about that. Uh, but I'm more happy that uh, my news channel, INN, got, got off to a flying start yesterday and got right into the thick of things. It does take a while to get back used to the schedule if, if you're doing journalism because it's every day and it takes just about six hours every day to sort of bring, to pull together all your resources and all the different fees that you're getting in and uh, so on and so on and then decide what you want to put on the air. So I had a, I don't script things out because it's too complex to script it out. Uh, there's too much information. So I basically have a note outline, an, out, an outline of what I want to do, and I do some of the stuff in the outline because there's too much time to get everything in there and get all the explanations in because there's an enormous amount of history. Anytime you have an event in, in journalism, there's an enormous amount of history that's in the background there that has to be known in order to really understand what's going on. Uh, but you know, if if you're uh, as I said, if you're a researcher and this is something you want to do, if you, this is a, and this is something you want to do for the rest of your life, then yeah, th this you know it's either this or writing a paper. I mean, most most researchers who do historical work will sit down, they'll write a paper, and you know, and then they'll publish it, and most people will see it. Well. I mean, f from my perspective, why do why be a political scientist and sit in uh, an office uh, and have no one see your work? I mean, why you know? There's no reason why a political scientist couldn't uh, you know pop onto YouTube and uh, set up their own news channel. I mean, just the way everyone does in the blogosphere, or uh, you know, you know, YouTube from my perspective is just as valid. As the blogosphere is, so that's my uh, take on things. But if you're a reader, and and this is uh, I was sort of looking at some more of the reading sites yesterday, and in yesterday's uh, comments X, I talked about uh, the, uh, the exclusive video that I'm going to uh, do for Big Bang Theory RL on Harry Potter. And yes, there is a job that can be had in uh, research. And research, uh, if, if you're a person who loves to read, uh, then, it, uh, then the job for you is researcher because that's what you're going to do, that's what you're going to get paid for. Basically, uh, the, give you an idea of what a res researcher does all day long is basically like going to school. It's, it's take your res the research, the project that you get, you're given in school and this is for those of you who are in elementary school and let's say you're given the project on the wolf or whatever you know take whatever project they're given and think of the time you spend in the library hanging out with your friends talking whatever you know that's what you do uh, for the rest of your life and you get instead of getting ABC for it your grades for it you get uh, money for it the better your, your, your the better whatever you put out is uh, the more money you get so that's sort of your grading system is your grading system is is <laughs> money to pay your bills <sighs> so this is the news gone up did I did about it's about a, I think right now the news will probably end up taking about a half hour every night uh, it will cover everything uh, that was in the previous day to a certain degree we're looking primarily at uh, the geopolitical events. Not we're not looking at uh, uh, any of these sort of whole surrounding fluff. You know, I don't really care what J Lo is doing or what Lady Gaga says. So, uh, and this is sort of where uh, I guess a uh, a side note comes in, and 
helicopter had mentioned how she wasn't too big of much of a fan of Harry Potter, and some other people that have that I, sort of as I was going by their page, who were also in the sort of this nerd fighters category, and the reader, and readers, they, they themselves, uh, some some of them had said that they weren't necessarily uh, Doctor Who fans, because Doctor Who is one of the uh, quintessential books that you have to have read. Uh, in, in order to be, be classified as a nerd, and any nerd uh, uh, with an earshot will know this, uh, and this is sort of like Doctor Who has long lines of uh, of uh, any uh, anime or manga, <laughs> and most geeks will know what I'm talking about. If you if you don't know what I'm talking about anime and manga, you don't know about Doctor Who, then uh, you're not too much of a geek. You're sort of maybe on the edges there, on the fringe. Because th these are the cons, these are the, uh, these are the, uh, the dress-up things, that the, uh, the conventions, where you go dressed as your favorite character, uh, to these conventions, the cons. Uh, this is, uh, uh, almost every, uh, uh, kid show has them. They've had, they had them way back in, uh, uh, from Lizzie McGuire, and they had them, they have, they had it in, uh, I Carly. So there's a there's there's an enormous history there. But anyways, the the, the one that I was going to talk about today, I was going to save him for the iron for INN my news channel, but uh, he's not appropriate for the channel. Uh, being that he well, here's what what happens is that. When you're younger, you idolize a lot of people that when you get older and you sit back and you look at what they did, they aren't as as impressive as you thought they were. In other words, uh, with experience in life and as you do more of your reading, uh, people who will seem impressive to others who have less experience are not as impressive to you. And this is sort of, Hank Green is in that category for me. Uh, a lot of people now are raving about Hank Green and, uh, you know, The Fault on Our Stars. That's his new book that's out. He is an author. Uh, for those of you those of you who don't know. Uh, and he came up, his majors is mi uh, microbiology, I think it is, and, uh, and then after that, he went into environmental sciences, which is, from a Sheldon Cooper point of view, uh, is nothing. It's not. It's, it's environmental. Environmental science, from a Sheldon Cooper point of view, is a pseudo science. If you're taking uh, uh, environmental studies or environmental science, you're wasting your time. It's not a real science. It's a lot of. Uh, let's use the uh, the uh, Big Bang Big Bang Theory term, hokum. And unfortunately, Hank Green seems to be uh, part of this hokum. And just yesterday, as I, was, as I was strolling around YouTube and doing my fun little bit, you know, nothing too serious, uh, I saw that Hank Green uh, had a little spiel. For, he tried to, to, to deal with the issue in Syria in just a little under five minutes. And that's, there's no way, you know, and he titled it Understanding the Syrian Situation, and he, you know, or something along those lines. I can't remember what it is. It, it's something about understanding Syria anyways. And the thing is, you can't do that in five minutes. And all he did when they watched this video was spout out but what's been on the news? He simply regurgitated, puked up what was in the news, and most of what's in the news isn't accurate anyway. It's 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 uh, propaganda. It's PR. It has nothing to do with reality. Uh, most mainstream news, and this is for those of you who even reading, you know, the New York Times and stuff like that, you're reading uh, stuff that is designed. 
to move you. It's not re it's not it's not raw news. It's not raw journalism. There's an enormous amount of political fiction there. And Hank Green is just as guilty of it. And this, well, this is probably because he's, he's an author and he sort of uh, knows how to spin his words that well, very well. And it's not, it, it, journalism is not sp about spinning your words. It's not about coming up with creative sentences and catchy titles. There's a rawness to journalism. If you're going to be getting into raw journalism, but we're going to talk about raw journalism, it's not finding the scoop. It's not that at all. It's digging in in the, geo, in, in the geopolitical world and finding out what's actually going on. Because there's an enormous amount that's hidden from us. And this has just been true throughout history. Journalism is a very, if you're doing it right, is a very dangerous field because you're poking your nose where you shouldn't be, and you're exposing information that people don't want seeing. That's the job of journalism, is to expose it. What, 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 the, what the guy, uh, Julian, Julian Assange, did in WikiLeaks is journalism. He went in and exposed things that shouldn't have been exposed. And, and, and look, at the problem, look at the trouble he's in. I mean, there's no difference between Julian Assange and Nelson Mandela. And just recently, there was the arrest, and I'll talk about this more later on tonight at, on INL, but it, it has an effect here on comment sex in, in the standard YouTube environment because it goes to SOPA, it goes to Protect IP. They just arrested the hackers. Uh, anonymous. There was a big fanfare about all these, these arrests and everything like that. And the bizarre thing that's going on is that these, if you're in a journal, a good journalist community, and you got your, you've got very good sources. You can sort of spot these things coming because they pop up as rumors. And a lot of these arrests are starting to look more and more like false flags. And false flags are events designed to create and heighten public hysteria. So that the, gov that, that the people will be afraid enough. It's sort of like domestic terrorism. It's the government terrorizing the people so that they will accept security measures that they ordinarily wouldn't, like these, the, the security checks that you see in the, uh, the airport. People they talk to them, oh, well, yeah, I don't really like these, these things, but they're necessary. We need to protect ourselves. Well, take a look at, the, you know, like I said this, what terror act was ever prevented by any of these security measures? And you, there's not, there is no, there's not one, secu one incident that was ever stopped by these security measures. They were stopped by alert people. It was the citizens themselves who acted who prevented these uh uh, 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 like, you know, the underwear bomber. He wasn't stopped by the security people. He was stopped by the people on the plane. Same thing with the uh, with the shoe bomber. And so the thing the thing is is that, that what, what we have what we have here is that and this is what what sort of Hank Green is now coming to represent is you have Hank Green sort of repeating to the younger people this empty rhetoric about government security and and th this whole view of human rights as this noble pursuit and I think I'm not going to go too deeply into what's going on in human rights right now because human rights is not what you think it is when you see human rights being uh, being shown on TV it's not what you think it is uh, and, but Hank Green is feeding into all this, all, and, and it's, it, it's all primarily propaganda. And, it's, it, 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 and you hate to see somebody stand up and say, oh, this is a great thing, and when, when they have no idea what they're talking about. And this is the Hank Green situation. Hank Green has an idea of things, but he hasn't fully and thoroughly researched it out. 
So now, but the thing is, maybe he's pulling off his popularity. I mean, he's very popular on the internet. He's got a huge audience, and he's able to say things and get things across simply because of his popularity that the other people can't do because they don't have that popularity. And this is this is actually why uh, celebrities are used. Celebrity is used in many cases for political purposes because they have the popularity, but they're used because people want to want things known without it being scrutinized and really analyzed. If you want to analyze something, if you want to analyze something and get something out that, that's really understood, you don't use a celebrity, you don't use popularity, you sit down and you put out a good documentary. If you want propaganda to go out there, you want to rally people up and you don't want them to think about what they're, what they're rallying for, the best way to do it is put a celebrity in there. That's the best way to do it. And that's the way, that's the way, this is the way PR and propaganda has always worked. So, what's happened now with Hank Green is Hank Green has basically become, uh, from what I'm seeing where he's going right now, but the different things he's doing, is he's become a propaganda PR person. Right? His celebrity is up there enough, he's getting endorsements, and now he is a spokesperson uh, for the corporate and the government environment. He has now sullied himself, sold himself out, and is now simply spewing out rhetoric uh, that he shouldn't be doing. Anyways, uh, I will see you again tonight uh, on the news. The news typically comes out around midnight. Uh, I have to wait for the news day to finish first. I have to pull in all the resources, all of my sources, and uh, then we move forward from there. So, uh, I will see you tonight on the news.